these are our medical compartments on this side, and it's got all the exact same uh, equipment that uh, one of our engines would typically have, uh, if not even uh, a little bit more, because oftentimes we'll have multiple patients uh, in one incident. Of a boat fire, uh, we would have approached the boat, of course, from the upwind side, so we're not breathing the smoke when we're on the boat. We don't have our general uh, breathing apparatus that you see us wearing, uh, like a house fire. Uh, we would approach a boat, we have a, essentially a grappling hook here. This is hooked to our boat. We would throw it into the boat that's on fire and, and put this in reverse. And what that does is it keeps the boat at a set distance from us and also prevents it, if we were hitting it with, uh, you know, 500, uh, 500 gallons per minute of water. Keeps uh, it from going away. Pushing, the boat would be getting pushed one way, and we'd be getting pushed the other. Uh, so by hooking the boat and keeping us in reverse, it keeps it straight in front of us and it makes it easier to control and put more consistent water in the foam on. Cool. And we'll show you, once we get these pumps going, it's, it's very powerful. Even uh, even just turning these will turn this whole boat around. Oh, wow. Like that. Yeah. So it's a, it's a real coordinated effort between the driver and the guy actually working the nozzle. Uh, if we need a turn or something, the guy up front can actually help. And also, you know, the driver needs to know what he's going to do and vice versa. We can respond. We get pretty good range. If there's a brush fire uh, along the shore side, uh, we could get, you know, both pumps going and spraying in a coordinated uh, event and sit there and just work back and forth, uh, keeping water on the shore the whole time. Cool. Lots of cool stuff I didn't know. Real, real quick, I'll show you the front door here. Again, like I was saying, if we had a patient in the water, uh, we'd send two people in with the patient with the backboard. Uh, if they had a possible spine injury, we'd float the backboard up under them. So we're now essentially laying on a backboard in the water. And with uh, two people up here, we could slide the board up, keep them on the spine board. Uh, so when they make it up on the deck, they're already on the board and ready to be uh, completely C spine. Uh, and that just takes all the risk out of trying to pick someone up over the edge of the boat or something like that. So that's one advantage that the new boat has uh, really given us up the old one. Okay. So the, the other advantage that gives us is when it comes time to transfer of care, uh, which is uh, we, we respond, we get the patients, and oftentimes if they're critical, we'll have a helicopter and, uh, of course, some ambulances waiting at a lawn train for us. Uh, with this ramp, we could actually pull right up to the launch ramp, lower this right onto the deck, and we could walk everyone right off the front, uh, right onto the ambulance journey, and send them on their way. So it's just made everything a lot better. water up from the lake and, and shooting it out the nozzle there. So it, it, uh, we can do that all day long until we run out of fuel. Uh, I talked about, you saw the nozzle reaction and it, the reaction it had on the boat, uh, making it real tough for the driver, and I talked about uh, needing to communicate. Uh, we've actually got for the guys that are going to be up front, wireless headsets, and we have wired headsets back there. So we're actually able to talk to each other and hear everything that's going on uh, without trying to yell over that loud engine that you know. So yeah, uh, typically our, our boat isn't on the water uh, 24-7. It's 
it's on the airlift, as you, you saw there. Uh, in a typical boat response, if we were at the, the fire station right now, and uh, let's say a uh, boat accident went out of a boat into the place somewhere, uh, engine 5 would get this path uh, to the boat as long as, as they were available, or the closest unit would, and we would respond to the boat. Uh, now in the situation uh, like today where we have only uh, three people, uh, we would actually also send a second unit. So more than likely it's going to end up being engine three and engine five, uh, assuming they're not tied up on other calls, uh, are going to respond to the boat and, and everyone's going to bring their medical equipment. Uh, the boat dumps in the water in about 30 seconds it, it takes us to, from the time we pull up, to dump it in the water and go. Uh, but we need uh, additional manpower simply for the fact that we're going to have one guy driving. Uh, we should have uh, one guy dedicated to uh, being in, in command and in charge of the boat. And then we need people for medical treatment, uh, people to assist loading and unloading of equipment. So you can tell, uh, like right now, if we were to get a boat accident and there's a possible uh, and more than one victim even, uh, we would sit here and wait for another engine to respond because we simply don't have the manpower right now. Uh, I described you know, what it takes to get people out of the water safely while maintaining the stabilization of their spine. Uh, that can't be done with just me and him. Uh, it's two people in the water and we would have only the guy driving uh, which wouldn't be able to assist us and get them out. So, Typical response, like I said, takes us, uh, in general, three to five minutes to get to the boat. Uh, it's another minute or two before we're actually leaving, and depending where on the lake the accident may be, uh, the boat does about 35 miles an hour, so you, you can figure it out from then. If we're responding all the way down to Park the Dam, uh, it might take you know a little bit for us to get there, just based on the speed. Uh, while responding, our response is very systematic also. Uh, we'll, we'll come down, all the gates uh, are locked, the keys are locked, uh, everything's locked up. So one guy will come in, start unlocking and opening everything. Uh, another guy uh, will grab the keys, jump in the boat, turn the batteries on, turn the blower on, uh, a lot of things that might be in there. Uh, turn all the radios on, get communication going. Um, another guy will, will dump the boat in the water and we'll put on all our equipment on as we walk down and we'll back back out and start heading out while everything else gets set up on board.